On today's Glory Day show, the matchups are set for the 50th Super Bowl in NFL history as the Carolina Panthers and the, new, uh, the Denver Broncos meet next Sunday in San Francisco. And once again, a quarterback named Manning knocked off Tom Brady and the New England Patriots, while Cam Newton leads his almost undefeated team into the big game as the favorites to win it all. Our good pal, Rocky Cleaver, former Jet tight end, will join us today to talk about last week's conference championship games and take a look at the big game coming up next weekend. And the best hour of your sports week is coming up on Glory Days, right now. Eatradio.com. Everybody, today is Saturday, January 30th, 2016, and you are watching the Glory Day Show with Bruce and Disco. My name is Paul Discofani. This is my good friend Bruce Oler. Kyle Melnick and Eric McAuliff are behind the glass, and you are joining us on the In Radio TV Network, broadcasting live from Studio C in the great state of New York. Good morning, my friend. How are you? All right. You know, I, uh, I survived the snowstorm, which uh -huh. of course us to miss our show. That's right. I forgot week. about that. You know, we uh, we just said, well, it's snowing. We're not coming in. <laughs> well, it was a lot of snow. Actually, last we week, did. Though. We got we got blasted here in the uh, in the New York area. We had like two feet of snow. I know in Massapequa. Yeah, we had at least two feet. Of it's snow. kind of surprising how much snow is gone though already. You know? No, it was great. Yeah. Did you? Uh, are you a snowblower guy? No, or I'm are you not. You a shovel guy? I'm a shovel guy. Oh, how was shoveling? It wasn't too bad. My son helped out a bit. My wife helped out a bit. For some reason, I mean, there was some drifts that were very high, but then they went down to nothing and. It didn't take us all that long. Maybe it took about four hours to dig everything out. So yeah, I, I was out. I went out three times. I went out in the afternoon on Saturday, uh -huh. and I went out after dinner on Saturday, and then I went out again, obviously Sunday morning. So with, how with how long little, how baby. long in uh, in total do you I'd think say about, it took? About six hours. Yeah, okay. About six hours. But I do two houses. I do my mother's house, also. Yep. And. Uh, and then, of course, just like everybody else, the snow plows came in and put two feet That's of snow the way it goes, man. in front That's of just my just the way driveway. it goes, you know. You know. I just, I know I've said this before, but I really hate the snow. I really, I've grown to hate it. I used to like the snow. I used to like going sledding. Yeah, know. sure. And you always like being off from school and stuff, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, but uh, I just, I can't take it. I just hate it. Although I love my snow blower. I love my snow. I saw you had a picture of that saying it was the best investment you ever made, is what best you said. Best investment ever, baby. It is a one. If you don't have a snowblower, I highly recommend it. Even if you live in Florida, you should get <laughs> yourself a snowblower. And by the way, you Florida people on Facebook, stop posting yeah, right, things. Right. We know what the weather is like in Florida. Yeah. You know? So there. You've got more bugs than we do. <laughs> anyway. So it was an interesting couple of weeks here. It was. It was. Of course, we have the... Uh, can we say that word, or we have to say the big game? Uh, we can say the big game. We okay. can also call it the Super Bowl. We can't call it the Super Bowl. As long okay. as we don't advertise it as the Super Bowl. I see. Okay. You see, like, it's a big game extravaganza next, next week. Next week, okay. And we're looking at having a live studio audience here next week. Yep. A live studio audience. You know, if you go to our Facebook page, you go to the Glory Days Facebook page. And like us. And if you like us and you say, I want to be in the audience, or uh, send me to the show, or give me a free ticket, or... Just say I want to be there. We'll uh, we're gonna right. get you. So we're still making the plans for this thing, but it's going to be an extravaganza like it like it always has been. Mm -hmm. We're going to give away some uh, concert tickets, concert tickets, and other bling. over at the Paramount. Other things we're going to. Uh, uh, we, we may even have a live cooking segment, depending on whether Kyle approves it or not. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh -oh. All, all of a sudden, the teleprompter went dark. I don't know, man. What are we talking about? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it is the, it's the first Super Bowl that doesn't have a Roman numeral. That's right. 
because they didn't want it to be Super Bowl L. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, next year does it become L one or or does it go or is it fifty one? Well, I guess I, I think uh, L one. Yeah, that would be terrible. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Last year's Super Bowl, I think, is the most Roman, Roman numeral era, uh, letters ever. Ever. Possible. It okay. was three X's. Right. A V and three ones, right? Yeah. Three I's, so it was X, 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 V, I, I, I. Yeah, that's, that's, that's way too complicated, yeah. man. I don't know, you know. <laughs> of course, if you were Common Core, you might know how to do that. I don't yeah. know. But, well, are, maybe they teaching, not. are they teaching Roman numerals in school know. nowadays? I read something the other day that talked about they don't teach uh, cursive. No, they don't teach cursive anymore. Penmanship. No. So now people don't know how to sign checks. Okay. That's know? what I said. What do you I mean, supposed to do with your signature? How dumb is that, man? You know. I, don't know. I guess it's too hard. I, uh, yeah. For them I, to teach I, cursive. Right. You know why? Because nobody likes the word cursive. We got they these delicate should've... geniuses that we're raising these days, man. <laughs> they, you know? they should. Well, you know what? You can't use cursive on a phone. So. So that's why they don't teach it. Oh, come on, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Although there is a font for cursive. There is. Yeah, I think it's called script. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this guy's pretty good. That's All right, good. so uh, here in the New York area, we had some exciting news. Obviously, if you're a New York Met fan, that we got Cespedes to right. sign that contract. Right. Uh, we offered him that three year contract. It's a one year opt out, but he's back in the lineup. You know what? I am ready. We got less than 20 days to he's, spring training. Yeah. How great is that? That is great. And uh, Terry Collins was uh, quoted in the paper, I guess, earlier this week, saying, we're in it to win it all this yeah, year. Finally, somebody is saying it. Yeah. Before. You know, last year, he said, we want, we're, we're in it to make the playoffs. Remember, yeah. he, he didn't say, I just want to get to 500. And, and so, you know what? All of a sudden, I have become a Terry Collins fan. Yeah, I was not a Terry Collins fan. I I really was all. I've always for, been a Tom uh, Collins fan myself. But, uh, <laughs> I, don't know. I always I always was a. Uh, I love the hashtag Wally Bowl for Wally Backman. <laughs> yep, but, that's right. Um, you know. But anyway, so you know, uh, right after the uh, the big game extravaganza, we'll uh, get back to start to talking about baseball a little yep. bit because then there's going to be the lull until. March Madness starts. Yeah, the college basketball. And which, then we'll have the, uh, the NHL. Uh, the Stanley NHL Cups playoffs, playoffs, playoffs coming. Starting. Yeah. So you know what? Since this is a football show today, okay. I wore my football tie today. Mm -hmm. What do you say we start talking about football? Okay. Sounds okay. good to me. So uh, both of the games last week were. Uh, I was looking forward to them, and one of them was a real exciting game, and the other one was a real blowout, man. Yeah, you know, although uh, Green Bay did come back. What's the end? Well, I mean, Green not Green Bay. Bay. Uh, Arizona did come back, but not like Green Bay came back. <laughs> they came back. You know what the final was, my oh, friend? 51 3? 49 to 15, <laughs> I think, was the final. Yeah, 49 to 15. You know, that sounds like it didn't come I'm back the all one, that much. Just remember, last week, I picked both right teams. You know, I know. And I, I meant and to post something about that. And I, and about I had that. to say that because last week, I admitted how bad I was the week before. Yeah, and I was telling you how great it was. Well, I, I didn't post that, but I mean, I think I in the first two, uh, two rounds, I did three out of four both times. So I figured yeah. I was a lock, and um, I lost both. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, there's, there's two fairly interesting stories coming out of this game, and we are going to get into all of the thing in our next segment when we have uh, Rocky Cleaver on it. Victor. Victor. <laughs> Victor Rocky Cleaver. Um, but let's talk about the Cam Newton uh, controversy. Yeah. Okay? Yep. So uh, Cam Newton says he knows why everybody hates him. And while the entire country seems to be up in arms over race relations, most recently regarding the non-inclusion of any people of color in the top acting academies in the Academy Awards, Newton kicked off Super Bowl week, the off week, by providing, in his words, an explanation as to why he has taken a lot of heat in the media and by fans that are writing letters criticizing his missteps. Well, it's because he's, uh, he's black. He's black? I don't know. Okay. This is what he said. I've said since day one, I'm an African-American quarterback, and that scares people because they haven't seen nothing they can compare me to. I don't think people have seen what I am or what I'm trying to do. Okay. Cam Newton, he always draws criticism because of his body language during uh, losses that always seem to question his leadership ability. Well, he only had one loss this well, year. Well, this so. season, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he blossomed into one of the game's most dangerous players. Yeah. But now the bashing has found more new and nonsensical levels. 
Although he'll be the sixth black quarterback to start a Super Bowl, he seems to be taking more criticism than the others. Who's criticizing him, though? Well, everybody's criticizing him because of what he does after he scores a touchdown. It's got nothing uh, to do with the fact that he's black. It's well, got the well, fact that he's... Well, uh, that he's uh, that's what Cam Newton says. Yeah. Well... Now, the last four Super Bowls yep. have had a black quarterback starting. Both Colin Kaepernick and Russell Wilson started. Now, critics don't like his touchdown dance. You know what they call it? Dubbing. Dubbing, right. What the heck does that mean? And parents have been writing letters attacking his dances as arrogant struts and pelvic thrusts like the uh, time warp. <laughs> Some are even calling him classless. classless. This is what he had to say. People are going to judge and have opinions on things that I have no control over. I felt a certain type of way then, and I feel a certain type of way now. Nothing pretty much has changed. The only thing that has changed is that we are winning. And that's probably true, like you were saying. I think the fact that he's winning now, he's drawing more attention to himself. Yeah. You know? But most quarterbacks don't celebrate like him. No, you know? no, but you I know mean, what? It's stark contrast, you know, Peyton Manning throws a touchdown pass, he walks over, shakes the guy's hand, right. and he goes to, the, goes to the sideline. He's not whatever yeah. the, this guy does, you know. <laughs> I don't get that thing down either, man. Well, yeah. now his coach has a different take on it. Ron Rivera, the coach of uh, Carolina, yeah. he feels that Newton has stayed out of trouble both on and off the field, and he's never embarrassed the league or gone over the edge with his fun. Unlike a guy like Johnny Football. Right, exactly. Okay. And you know what? He's absolutely right. He is. Uh, I think people believe you should be stoic when you play this game, he said. But a lot of people disagree and think you should have some fun. This is a kid's game. I know there's a lot of money involved, but at the end of the day, it's about entertainment. If you aren't enjoying yourself, don't play the game. It's that simple. You know, and he's right, because there are so many miscreants yeah. in the NFL. True. You know what I mean? You look at uh, that Cincinnati game, right? These guys, oh, these exactly. thugs that are playing the game. Right. You know? So Newton is different than most quarterbacks, white or black. Yeah. First of all, he's six foot five. He's 260 pounds. Yeah, that's a big guy. And he's more like a running back than a, a quarterback. Uh, and maybe if they win on Sunday, he'll just be known as a Super Bowl champion. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. But you know what they say, the NFL stands for the No Fun League. No fun so league. I guess, you know, he's trying to have a little fun. And, and again, I don't really... Girls just want to have fun, right? Girls just want to <laughs> have fun. So talking about having fun. Yeah. You know, there was a Tom Brady story this week. Okay. Okay. I'll bite. Uh, yes. Well, he almost did. <laughs> um, the Denver Broncos... Uh, the Denver Broncos hit New England quarterback Tom Brady 20 times during the AFC Championship game. He was the a most, man siege the whole But he's game. the most any quarterback has been hit all yep. season. Yeah, even a deflated football couldn't save him right. this time. And as if beating the Patriots wasn't insulting enough, the Sports Illustrated, uh, Sports Illustrated website MondayMorningQuarterback.com quoted an anonymous Bronco player, defensive player as saying he wanted to embarrass Brady even further. Okay. Well, how do, you, how do you do that? Well, this is what he said. He said, I tried to lay on him a few times. I tried to rub my nuts on his face. It's nuts. It's nuts. You know, I didn't know. First of all, I didn't know that you were allowed to carry peanuts with you <laughs> yeah, yeah. onto the field. It might have been a filbert, you know. It might have okay, been. You know. As a matter of fact, the beating was so severe that Patriots fired their offensive coach, Dave DeGugliamo, the next day. Hmm. Right? But... Who was that anonymous player? It's no secret that many players dislike Brady. Some of the Denver players had chatter before the game. Defensive end Antonio Smith called Brady a crybaby. And Malik Jackson called him a whiner who throws temps, temper tantrums. You know, he doesn't like to be hit. You know, that, he's not in his comfort zone. You know, he the, was very uncomfortable on Sunday. You know, one of the things that we talked about on this show uh, a number of times was that, you know, the players wear too much equipment. And that means that, you know, because they're so protective, they're a little overprotective. And we talked about, you know, if they didn't have face masks, maybe there wouldn't be as many high hits to the head and stuff like that. But maybe we should reconsider that argument that the game would be safer if the players don't wear face masks. Especially if somebody's trying to rub their nuts in your face, okay? You know? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. All right. We're just getting started here, right? I think we are. Okay. Uh, we're going to, uh, right after the break, sorry, we're going to talk to a real football player, former Jets quarterback Rocky Cleaver, uh, quarterback. I got quarterbacks on the uh, yeah, nose. Yeah. Uh, former <laughs> Jets football player and tight end Rocky Cleaver will uh, join us on the Glory Days Hotline. You think he's ever tried to teabag anybody on the. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> on the field. Uh, later on, we'll have a couple stories in you. Did, you. did you hear about segment? Stay with us. You're watching the Glory Day Show with Bruce and Disco only on the Arabio TV Network. We're coming right back. For 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. Village Music Shop of Mastic, 1-800-HEY-DUDE, your full service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems and accessories, it's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Mastic, call 1-800-HEY-DUDE or go to villagemusicshop.com. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, Inravio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is Inravio.com. Welcome back to the Glory Day Show with Bruce Disco here on the Enravio TV Network. Uh, last year, our next guest traveled all the way from South Jersey to help us co-host this program during our big game extravaganza. And in each of the last three years, he has correctly predicted the winner of the Super Bowl. Yeah, what do you say? The ones that scores the most points wins. I yes, think it's and he's said. been okay. right every time. All, right. all anybody could talk about last year was deflated balls, but this year the talk seems to be about rub rubbing them in Tom Brady's face. Please welcome a man who knows more about bowls than he probably should have, Rocky Cleaver. Rocky, are you there? Yes, I am here with my old balls. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> How are you? How you been? I'm good. I've been good. I just had to, my grandson fell asleep on me, so I just had to hand him off and run upstairs. Oh, so no, we won't have a snoring grandchild? No, no. He was <laughs> snoring, though. He's a, he's a good little snorer. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rocky, um... A little disappointed you're not going to make it next week for our extravaganza, so I'm wondering, what are you doing next weekend exactly that you can't yeah, make What it? are you doing for the Super Bowl? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you're kind of calling me out. Well, um, no, no, no. We just, we, we just want to know where you're going to be. Well, I, I wish I was actually at Howard Stern's Super Bowl party because yeah. I was thinking about that. Uh, about, it was about 20 years ago I went to it, and it was the most amazing Super Bowl party I've ever been to. So. <laughs> Who was at that I'm party? Gonna be, I'm going to be down I think I'm going to be in Las Vegas. My mom lives in Arizona in the winter. Okay. And uh, my mom's 81, and she's trying to move some stuff, and she wants to do it all herself, so I'm going to go out and try to help oh, her. Yeah. That's a good son. You're a good Such son, Such a Rocky. good boy. 
She's the one that gave you that nickname you. Rocky, I remember, too, right? <laughs> Yes, she is. She loved Rock Hudson. There you go. <laughs> I remember that story. It's a few years ago now we talked about that. Yeah. So did you, uh, so the football, we talked to you probably sometime, I believe, in the middle of the, of the football season. Did it turn out like you thought it was going to turn out? Uh, you know, I didn't really pay that much attention to the Carolina Panthers, but um, it basically did. I was surprised the Eagles kind of flopped. Yes. And then I was still surprised they fired Chip Kelly. Yeah. And it was a really a lovely surprise how the Jets played. They they really played well as a team. I mean, they did a great job. They did. It was a little disappointing that last game, though. I mean, all they had to do was win, and, uh, you know, we might be talking about them going to the Super Bowl. Who knows, you know? Yeah, and then, uh, you know, the bad thing is, uh, you know, losing to Rex Ryan. And yeah. Losing to him twice. My son and I went to that Thursday night game where they lost. Yeah. And, you know, it's just both games were very winnable. Really, the, the Jets, I mean, I don't think they had too many horrible games. Like, they were kind of in a lot of games again. I think, you know, if they just get a couple key players, I don't know what happened to their tight ends, but just get a couple key players, they could be, you know, well into it next year. You know, one of the, one of the things that, uh, you know, people tend to forget is not only did they, what, they win four games last year? Yeah. Right? Not only did they only win four games last year, but there was no hope last year. There was no, no light at the end of the tunnel last year. Well, they brought in a lot of good players, though, and, and everybody played well. And Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think, was, uh, he, had, he had the best year of his career. You, you know? know, and I think a lot yeah. of them, uh, and I think uh, it's, a lot of it is coaching. You know what I mean? I think that um, Todd Bowles was probably the right guy at the right time for this I, I think he still is. I, I, th I expect nothing but great things for the Jets in the next few years. I really, I, I really think they're um, on the upswing. Yes, so do I. Yeah, the, the Fitzpatrick kid, I mean, he's always been good. Right. Um, you know, whether he was, you know, the best in the league or the best starter, he's always been good. And this year, you know, with a quarterback coach and an offensive coordinator, and they, they call the kind of plays that he can run and that yeah. kind of thing. And, God, he's pretty gutsy. He, he ran the ball hard. And I think he didn't even have surgery on that thumb and then yeah, came he back. And yeah, he came so back the next, next week. Year, yeah. You know, uh, you know, you know what it was. It's it's the first quarterback uh, leader they've had in quite some time. You and know? what he did is what they wanted to do: protect the ball. He right. didn't, you know. I mean, they exactly. they had turnovers, but they didn't have all that many turnovers. And you know, that's what they're hoping for Geno Smith. Of course, I think it was a blessing what happened to Geno. I hate to say that, yeah. but the, I, and I don't know how long he's going to be with the team to tell you the truth. You know. We'll, well see. I mean, he still would be a good backup. Yeah. Um, right. And he's not getting paid that much, is he? I don't really. I try not to pay attention to how much people get paid. Yeah, I know. It's got to bother you because <laughs> you always compare it to what you were making, I guess, back then, right? Uh, no, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. And I mean, because, like, I think we talked about this, too. When I was there, guys like Joe Fields and Randy Rasmussen, I mean, they were saying how they had to have off season jobs to get by. So I, right. that doesn't really bother me at all. Um, it just, I hate to see a team get messed up by one guy getting paid more than he should or, you know, so a team might either try to restructure or cut him or I, I like to see a team stick together longer and it's tough when there's so much money out there. Right, and especially, you know, it's a little bit of continuity. You know, you, uh, the players get used to a certain quarterback and, it, and it's not just, uh, it's the way he throws the ball. Is that right, Rocky? I mean, quarterbacks throw the ball differently. There's different spins, there's different, and you get used to a guy, right? I mean. Yeah, like, I mean, if, even if you go back to, like, to a Joe Montana, he, he supposed he, he didn't have a real strong arm. He threw very catchable balls. I mean, some guys that throw the ball too hard, they don't have touch or they have too much touch. And then when you, you play catch with them every day, you catch balls from every day, you, they throw to you every day. You, you do kind of get into a rhythm with your quarterback, and it does take time. I think Fitzpatrick throws a very catchable ball. Yeah, he's not, you know, I mean, they used to talk about the, uh, they used to call it the, the Elway cross. Uh, yeah. Because he threw the ball so hard it would hit you in the chest, and the little cross from the football would <laughs> stick in your, in your <laughs> chest. Um, yeah, what do you think Al about Altoon, yeah. Altoon went to a Pro Bowl with uh, Elway, I think, as the quarterback, and he came back and said, you know, he preferred Kenny O'Brien <laughs> and the kind of ball he threw to. Because, I mean, Elway threw a really good ball. It's just if you were, you know, running a five-yard pattern, it was one of those ones that could blow you up. 
<laughs> what do you think about uh, what's going on with, uh, with Peyton Manning and, um, you know, how they, uh, I mean, obviously he got hurt, uh, he came back, and obviously he's a completely different quarterback. Can he win this game? Can he win this game? Obviously, um, you know, you don't make turnovers, but can he win this game? Well, I mean, his team can win it. I don't think he's going to be the one to win it, kind of like when Trent Dilfer won it. Like, uh, he's, I don't think he's going to throw for 400 yards and carry the team. But if they're, but down, if they're down a touchdown, and uh, is he going to be able to drive them uh, into, a, a, into a position to win that game? Yeah, I would say. I mean, uh, you know, watching the game, I'll, I'll hope it's just to make it exciting. I, the only reason I want um, Denver to win would be because I do kind of know that Brock Osweiler kid. Oh, okay. Um, Where do you know him high from? School, he went to high school in Montana, and he was involved in this uh, a charity in Montana that I was involved with. And so he went there the last couple of years, and I met him. He's a nice kid, you know. He, he didn't go to the University of Montana, but he, he went to Arizona State. So we all kind of follow the Montana kids. And, I mean, I thought it was a good move to play him. And then, obviously, Peyton Manning came back strong. I didn't think Peyton Manning was going to come back really as strong as he did this year. Well, let me ask you. You play, uh, play Denver coach for a minute here. Uh, Peyton okay. Manning does not come out of the gate strong. Uh, you're down by a touchdown. Uh, do you take him out and put Brockweiler in this game, or is this Peyton well, yeah, Manning's uh, game no, unless he gets hurt? I think you know. I think they're probably going to stick with him. They would. I don't know what I would do. Obviously, I don't know what the hell I'm doing on a day to day basis <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, you can't um, get that bar open, can you, man? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> right. I go over there and it's closed and freezing. I have the electric on at least. Uh, but, that's good. You're paying um, some bills then. You know, that's good. <laughs> you know, the, the thing about uh, the Carolina Panthers, and I was very surprised even into the playoffs, um, if Peyton Manning doesn't do well and score and at least kick some field goals, you know, they could be down 21 to nothing if, before they start thinking about putting in Brock Osweiler. Yeah, right. And by that time, it could seriously be too late. Like, Whoever's quarterbacking, I think they have to score almost every, you know, play down. Not not every play, but every series. Yeah. Right. E- even a field goal. I I think they got to – they can't just go three and out. And they no, can't they can't have a lot of three and outs. Right. And they can't fumble and they can't, you know, throw interceptions. And I, I Denver's offense has to kind of keep the ball – and keep things going in a positive way so the defense does have some hope, even though I guess everybody's saying Denver's defense is the best in the league. Well, it's kind of reminded me of the, the Jet teams, the Rex Ryan Jet teams. You know, um, you've got a great defense that's going to keep you in the game. They're not going to allow a lot of points. If they do, you're screwed anyway because your offense is not a high-scoring offense. So you really just want, like you were saying, Rocky, you just want the offense not to make – not yeah, make I, I, I just think the Carolina's Carolina. defense is better than people give them credit for. And I'll tell you that. I'll tell you what, you know, um, if you look, Carson Palmer, I think, is a lot like, uh, like uh, Peyton Manning. I mean, he's not going to be able to run around and stuff like that. They're going to bottle him up. I, I really think it's going to be a blowout. I really but I think so. that I'd like yeah, to I, see. Do you, go ahead, Rock. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I, I, I think the same thing. Yeah. The, uh, the, I'm wondering... Uh, if the Carolina offense has seen a defense like Denver before this year. I mean, granted, you're 15 and 1. Yeah. There's not a lot of yeah. teams that were 15 and well, 1. Well, they in the said, you know, I mean, the knock on them is most of the teams they played, you know, didn't have good records. You know what I mean? But they still won 15 still, games. Still, you've got to win 15 games. Yep. Yeah. Right, right. Now, I think Denver, I think I mean, it's Denver a good obviously thing they has lost. a great defense, but I'll tell you what, you know, I think Carolina's off, uh, defense is better than people give them credit for. And I don't think the Denver's offense is that good. I really don't. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So uh, well, they, switch, um, switching gears here a little Demetrius, bit. Go ahead, go ahead, Rocky. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, what's his name? Demetrius Thomas. Yeah. Demarius. Yeah, Thomas? Demarius. I yeah. Don't know. Right, Demarius. He's got to do something. Like everybody's got to kind of do something. Nobody can really flop. 
and they've got to run the ball, and they've got to be efficient and all that. Yeah. But still, they, they could still get blown out. They could. I think the difference is going to be that uh, Manning is going to, because of their run game, they're going to control the ball. They're going to have long drives. Um, and I think that uh, I'm saying that they're going to win this game. Well, you know, you got them both right last week. So, I, you know, <laughs> I can't say what do you know because, you know, I got them both wrong last week. I really know nothing. It's yeah. just a 50% shot. So, uh, <laughs> switch your gears here for a minute. So, the movie Concussion, did you see that movie, Rocky? Uh, you know what? I, I went to, I was going to another movie and I had time and uh -huh. I went and watched the beginning of it and I didn't stay for it and I went and ended up watching that, uh, 13 hour, the, the Benghazi oh, movie. Oh yeah, sure, oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I, I read the book and I wanted to see the movie, but, and I watched up until Mike Webster died. And I was kind of like, you know, now I feel good about leaving cause I really <laughs> just want to see <laughs> You know, I mean, he was yep. in bad shape, and I don't. No, none of my friends are in bad shape like that. I mean, Joe Klecko's doing great. Yeah, and he's one of those guys that, you know, was always hitting and hitting with his head, and you know, playing football. Like he probably got hit more than anybody when you think about what he did. Sure. Yeah. And he's, you know, he seems fine to me. So, at that point, I thought, uh, well, I don't know. If I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to go back and watch it again, but, um, uh, you know, I, it's weird to go and watch it, to tell you the truth. Well, especially, I guess, since you were, uh, you know, you lived that kind of a life, too. So and you lived that asking, era. I was really wise wondering about that. You know, the, uh, well, it, 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 it's, it was, uh, my son Kevin saw it, yeah. and uh, I, I actually have it illegally okay. to watch, but my son Kevin oh, saw it. <laughs> hey, listen, you went in and saw it for free, so <laughs> have no comments about me, my friend. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't go in with a camera strapped on <laughs> True. I have friends on the Academy yep. that send me the movies. No, um, but he says it really makes the NFL look bad. It's not, I, the argument isn't that they didn't know about it, because they didn't at the time. Nobody knew uh, what the long-ranging effects yeah. were going to be. Yeah. It was once they knew about the long-ranging effects, they didn't do anything about it. Yeah, well, it's, it. a, it's the same thing in, in business. I mean, you know, if you don't know that something's going on, it, it's, you're better off than if you do, you did nothing about it. I right. mean, because there's that, culpability there, I think, right. is what that to me, Yeah, think, right. Yeah, right. That's, that's like what the yep. most damning thing is. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And, you know, we did play, and it, it's, you know, I was never, ever entirely knocked out in a football game. Mm -hmm. So at first I was like, oh, I'm cool. I was never knocked out. And then they say, well, there's other little, you know, smaller concussions that can do damage. Mm. Um, the only redeeming thing is a, a couple of my friends that are, you know, in their 50s, I'll be 57 in July. Like, uh, you know, when I go to the house to unlock the house, I push the button like I'm getting in my car. You know, the uh, <laughs> unlock button, and it doesn't work, and I'm like, what the what's going, going on? on? <laughs> yeah, but some of my friends are the same way who never played football, so yep. it's so, just kind of one of those wait and see things. The the one thing I do hope comes from this is that our pensions go up. There you go. And that you know, we, we maybe I think it would be a good thing if every ex player had a good you know health benefit package. Because we get no benefits now as far as medical. Well, let me so. so you're not on oh, really? Obamacare? No, no. <laughs> I actually went to sign up for it. It, it took so long I couldn't even get signed <laughs> up for it. Well, you know, it's amazing. If you, if you don't sign up for it, they're going to take it out of your tax refund and you're going to get fined. But if you come into well, the country... But it's not a tax. No. It's not but, a tax, But if you come into the country illegally, yeah. we give it to you for free. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever got a refund since I was like 18 years old. So I'm like, <laughs> take it out of what refund? Give me a refund first, then who gives a shit? Yeah. Oops. Uh, now I want to switch gears one more time here. So How many gears I, you got? I, think, I only got two. I only got two. So um, I think the NFL does something cool. And that I guess they announce who's going into the Hall of Fame that that Saturday, the Saturday night before the Super yes, Bowl, the next year. So and there's a lot of good players there. I think some of them you even played against. Do you have any, you know, favorites that you think should go in? Do you remember who you, you know, know who's, who's uh, eligible this year? I don't even know who's eligible. All I know is Joe Klecko's not. Yeah. So and how I am is going that? to 
I'm going to boycott the Hall of Fame this year. <laughs> I see, I see. Because there's no Joe Kleckos. <laughs> well, there's not mainly enough... because, <laughs> because he's a, he's a Polish-American, and right. I think it's, there's some sort of racism towards Polish Americans <laughs> that if everybody stands up and say we need more Polish Americans in our Hall of Fame, then maybe he'll get in. Can I? I do, do you do, do you know? Does anybody know what the uh, what the qual not the qualifications are in baseball? Um, you, the the qualifications are you just have to have played for a certain number of years. Yeah. Then you have to be retired. For yeah, a I, I should have looked that up. I, I did not but, put that on a list. Because I'm wondering quick. why somebody was Joe Klecko like on the ballot for a number of years and then didn't get in, so now he's off the ballot. Yeah, I don't or know. was he never on the ballot? I don't. I, know. Know. I don't know if he's ever been on it. I know. I think it's you have to be out for five years and then you can be like a first ballot guy. I don't know who was the first. Joe Montana was probably a first ballot guy. Yeah, a lot of a lot of guys don't go in. Don't go in on their first. You know what? Uh, you, when you call, next time you talk to Joe. Next time you talk to Joe, give him our number because we'd like to talk to him about it. Yeah. So okay. I'll, I'll go down this list here quick. You got the kicker, Morton Anderson. Could kickers get in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, I guess. I don't know how many are in there. You got the safety, Steve Atwater. You had coach Don Coriel. Oh, Aaron back, Coriel. Terrell Davis. Uh, Terrell, Terrell Owens. Uh, no, Terrell Davis and Terrell Owens. Terrell mm -hmm. Owens is also up there. Uh, Alan okay. Fanica. Uh, Brett Favre. I heard of him. Kevin Green. Marvin Harrison, Joe Jacoby, Edgerin James, John Lynch, Terrell Owens, Orlando Pace, and Kurt Warner. Well, I'm going to oh, tell wow. you something. Well, I mean, okay. That's a lot of people, Morris right? Get in it, right? That's a lot of people, yeah. All right, well, they I'm going to tell you this. Here, um, Terrell Owens, Brett Favre, okay? yeah. Marvin Harrison, uh, and Kurt Warner have all been on my fantasy football team at one point or another. That has nothing to do oh. with their qualifications <laughs> here. You know? yeah. yeah, I think the controversial one is Terrell Owens because, you know, in, unlike baseball where, you know, it's not just your accomplishments on the field, it's also the way you conduct yourself with things like that. Because yeah. I'm not sure he was a great teammate, Terrell Owens. He has so many stupid things about that guy, but you can't dispute, I guess, his records or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, it would right. be interesting to see if he goes in the first round or not. Well, now I know there is something because last year they have a veterans committee or something. Yeah. An old dude can can try to vote in. I think two people. But last year they voted in like some guy that played in 1956 that died, and then like an owner that died or something. Like Al Davis, they voted right. him in. Yeah, well, you know? you know what? I'm going to do some. I'm going to do the, some. The two fi the, there's two senior finalists this year, okay? And one of them is Kenny Stabler. Oh, okay. The okay, because he died. Yep. And uh, then this guy's Dick Stanfield, guard for the 52 to 55 Detroit Lions and the 56 to 58 Washington Redskins. You know, and he must have died this year, too, then. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to. I think we should do some research and find out how we can get Joe Klecko on the ballot. Yeah. We should, you know, like a Well, I mean, as a, well, Joe Klecko comes down to Wildwood every year and we get together and. Um, because as a joke, I kind of said, well, Joe, you know, I think probably the year after you die, you'll get on the ballot. <laughs> that must have made him feel like, confident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, I just should not be in that. All right. All right. No, we should uh, really. I mean, we, I, I'd love to talk to him about, about what we could do to get him into the whole thing. We we'll, could we'll do a little that. research, you know. Wouldn't that be cool? We could champion that and get yeah. Joe Clark. We could maybe make t-shirts. We're trying to get Pete Torgerson into the Quinnipiac the Hall of Fame, too. Hall. So we got a few things to do. All right, Rob, so we're, we're heading up against the break. Who's going to win the game? Uh, probably North, Car um, North Carolina. Carolina <laughs> Panthers. <laughs> I'm thinking with you there, Rocky. I am going and, to go you with. You know, I, I hate. To, I think the spread. You know, we. I don't know if we're supposed to talk about gambling. We could. I kind of got warned one time way back because I said something about my brother and gambling, and the, <laughs> the league kind of said, "What are you doing talking about point spreads and gambling?" <laughs> because my brother gave a gave me a facet. The the home team after a short week that's favored by more than seven ends up not covering the spread, and it happens like 100% of the time. And I said that, and they were like, what are you talking about? Like I was some kind of bookie or something. <laughs> but I think the spread's only like six or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I would think Carolina will beat them by 30. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, but I just think they get rolling, and before you know it, like, 
that one game they played Seattle, I stopped watching yeah. for the second half. And and I would I wished that Seattle had kicked that field goal just to make it thirty one to three at halftime. Yeah. Because I just thought that would be a, a funnier score than you know, thirty one to nothing. Yeah. You know, I'm uh, But I'm I gonna... think it rolling and then Arizona, weren't they ahead like Seventeen and nothing, or twenty something. It was seventeen and nothing. Before. They were ahead of uh, uh, Arizona before they scored. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm I'm going in the complete opposite direction. I think Denver's going to win this game in one of the lowest scoring Super Bowls ever. <laughs> I think we're going to check your urine on the way out of here. Today. <laughs> <laughs> like like the Jets score. What was the Jets score? Nineteen sixty. Yeah, it was yeah. like something. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying Denver in bet the under. Okay. I don't even know what uh, the well, over-under is, but okay, I'll say one quick thing. Yeah. One quick thing. You know Randy Beverly. You remember Randy yes. Beverly, right? Yeah. He went to high school in Wildwood, New Jersey. Okay. And uh, I went, for just some reason, I went to the Wildwood basketball game last night. A friend of mine is the coach. And he had gone to the school and done that, that football, that 50th year Super Bowl golden football thing that day. Yeah. So they honored Randy Beverly for that day in Wildwood. And oh, that's cool. If you, if you guys look at it, Randy Beverly should have been the MVP of the Super Bowl. Mm. I believe he had two interceptions. Yeah, I know he one had at least one. Win, yep. One of which was in the end zone, like at the end of the game. Yeah. And I think Namath only threw for like 200 yards. Like, Namath yeah. didn't kill it. No, he didn't. It, it was all, uh, that's the kind of, actually, that's the kind of Super Bowl Peyton Manning's going to have this year. Matt Snell and uh, Emerson Boozer, I think, ran pretty well right, though, yeah. in that game, you know? Yeah. No, they yeah. did, exactly. Yeah. Those yeah. two guys, Randy Beverly, I mean, it could have very easily been, you know, 27 to 19, or 27 to 16. It could have been a whole different score without those interceptions and without them running the ball. No doubt. All no right, doubt. man. Enjoy your, uh, enjoy visiting with your mommy. Yeah, and, uh, okay. tell her we said son. hello. Okay, great talking to you, yeah, Rocky. No, yeah. We're going to miss I'll you next tell week. Her and, and she'll say, who the hell are those guys? <laughs> Bruce says, and Disco, come says, on, man. Well, it's Bruce and yeah. Disco, don't you watch the show? <laughs> <laughs> great talking All to right, you. All right, see you guys. All, All right, right man, thanks. All right. All right. That's uh, Rocky Cleaver from the uh, former NFL player. Right, so tight cool. end. It's so cool tight to talk end. to a guy like that. So let's take another break here on the Glory Day Show. When we get back, we'll bring you up to, uh, up to date in a few stories in our Did You Hear About segment. Stay with us. You're watching Glory Day Show with Bruce and Disco, only on the Radio TV Network. Coming right back. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Radio.com. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. Village Music Shop of Master, 1-800-HEY-DUDE, your full-service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems, and accessories. It's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Master. Call 1-800-HEY-DUDE or go to villagemusicshop.com. Hey, this is Chris Lewis Jake, and if InRavio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. Welcome back to the Glory Day Show with Bruce Disco here on the InRavio TV network. 
And, you know, if you want to know the final score from last night's game, you've got plenty of sources. You can go to ESPN or Yahoo Sports, anything on the Internet to get the stats and, and more. But here on the Glory Day Show, we want to bring you, our twisted yet sophisticated audience, something that you may not have heard about in a segment that we call, Did You Hear About? That was right on cue, man. That was great. Story number one uh, highlights a real controversy in international sports. What do we do with transgender athletes? More specifically, what do we do with their original, well, let's call it hardware? As opposed to software? Uh, If you're a male athlete transitioning to a female athlete and you'd like to compete in international events, well, removing your genitalia is now optional. The International Olympic Committee has changed their policy to adapt to current scientific, social, and legal attitudes on transgender uh, issues. Specifically, you no longer have to snip it if you want to win it. The IOC points out that these are just guidelines and not rules or regulations. International sports federations should follow the guidelines, and they should also be applying them for this year's Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. That's the uh, Summer Olympic, I guess. That's huh? the Summer Olympics. Okay. Now, IOC Medical Director Dr. Richard Budget said this, I don't think that many federations have rules on defining eligibility of transgender individuals. This should give them the confidence and stimulus to put those rules into place. Now, under previously guidelines, which were approved in 2003, athletes who transitioned from male to female or vice versa were required to have the reassignment surgery followed by at least two years of hormone therapy therapy before being allowed to compete. Now, surgery is no longer required. As a matter of fact, female to male transgender athletes are eligible to take place in events without any restriction. It doesn't seem fair. It doesn't. However, male to female transgender athletes will need to demonstrate that their testosterone levels have been below a certain cutoff point for at least a year before their first competition. It also requires that their declaration cannot be changed for sporting purposes for a minimum of four years. So I guess like if you declare that you're a woman, you can't undeclare it. I say. I guess. No do-overs, huh? No (laughs) do-overs. IOC President Thomas Batch said, to require surgical anatomical changes as a precondition to participation is not necessary to preserve fair competition, fair competition and may be inconsistent with developing legislation and notions of human rights. The overriding sporting objective is and remains the guarantee of fair competition. I guess although they no longer require anatomical surgery, do you think they could at least require them to wear makeup? <laughs> Take All I think that. of Take is, a look. Put that picture back up there. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, yeah. Come on! Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. All I can think of is the song Lola. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dumb, but I don't understand why she talked like a woman but walked like a man. All right. All right. We're going to story number two now, okay? Story number two takes us to the ice in Tenafly, New Jersey, where a high school ice hockey coach tried something rather unconventional against a far superior opponent. Although it didn't turn, turn out the way it was intended, you can always file this under, well, at least they tried. Tenafly High School in New Jersey attempted to start a hockey game in December against St. Joseph's of Montvale by putting just four skaters onto the ice and two goalies in front of the net. It seems that the team from St. Joe's was such a high-scoring machine that they know they were going to get beat pretty badly anyway. So Tenafly coach Alan Escala thought, what the heck? Put two goalies out there, okay? I recalled reading it in a book about a team in Rhode Island years ago and was like, let me try this. I did some research and it was like, I know what the answer is going to be, but I'm still going to try this and let's see what the officials say. I wonder if he really knew. I don't know. You think he just did it? I think he just did it. A scale of position, both goalies on the ice at the start of the game, one in front of the other and at the top of the crease. After all... If you can replace a goalie with an extra skater, if you wish, why can't you replace one of your skaters with the goalie? Seems like sound strategy, doesn't it? I thought so. Yeah. Well, it's not illegal. And it's not. Well, yeah. it is illegal, I guess. Yeah. Keep going there. Okay. Well, for one thing, it is illegal. There you go. There's an NHL rule against it, Rule 5.3, that states each team shall be allowed one goalkeeper on the ice at one, uh, at one time. The goalkeeper may be removed and another skater substituted. 
sub substitute shall not be permitted to privileges of the goalkeep. Sounds like a tax law. It does. But there was an underlying reason for Escala's unconventional and highly illegal strategy. Escala was really protesting the fact that Tenafly even had to play St. Joe's, who's ranked number 17 in all of New Jersey. His team is rebuilding and only had two seniors and asked to opt out of the game. But in the Big North Conference, both coaches have to agree to opt out. St. Joe's insisted on playing the game anyway. Now, why would they do that? I don't know. At first it started as, you know, well, this may be your own way of actually trying to win this game, Escala said, but then it became more of a statement saying, why does St. Joe's want to play a public school that's down, working their way back up? It really doesn't benefit either team. By the way, St. Joe's crushed Tenafly 10-0. Both Tenafly goalies got into the game, but one at a time. Now, if a goal gets scored against both of them, who does it count against is what I, I want to get up. But you would think that if you're going to put two goalies in a game, yeah. wouldn't you put them right next to each other to block the goal better? Why would you put them one in front of each other? Or you could stack them up maybe. You know, we'll have one on <laughs> their shoulders. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't, you know, when I first when I first read this story, yeah, I said, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of silly. But then I thought that I didn't think there was a rule against it. I thought that you just can't have more than six people on the ice at any one time. But that was an NHL rule that you cited there. Right, so but, I, they, I, but they use that. You know what? They got they, they got penalized by the way. They got penalized for delay of the game. Really? Yeah, because they started the game with uh, and now. Here's my other question. You know, before a game, as a coach, you give the you give your starting Six guys yeah. to the referee. That's part of the. Uh, that's part of the thing. Didn't the, the guy protocol. see that it was two goalies? I, I, I assume so. So I, I don't know. I just thought that it was. Uh, Where's Pete Torgerson when we need him? Pete? <laughs> no, really, we have to talk to Pete. Um, let's just talk about for for a minute the big game extravaganza yeah. next week okay. before we go to our last break. Okay, um, you know we're gonna. Uh, last year, we had such an extravaganza. We had a live audience. Yeah. We had Rocky Cleaver was here. He autographed some footballs for people, and uh, we had prizes. We had a lot of different things. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna try to. We're gonna try to better it this year. We're gonna make it better this year. And by making it better, we're not gonna have any other guests. <laughs> no. Uh, we won't have Rocky, but it's gonna be full with surprises next week. Okay, we're going to be giving away tickets yep. to concerts at the Paramount. We're going to be giving away door prizes. We're actually going to be giving away doors because <laughs> we're right next door to a hardware place. Uh, we're going to have T-shirts. We're going to have Frisbees. And we're going to have food. We may even have a guy here, a chef, cooking things and showing us things that you could do at a tailgate party. And you know what else we're going to have? What? Sammy Stone. We will have Sammy Stone. <laughs> we will have Sammy Stone. And what's the other guy's name? Week. Surf and Slate. And Surf and Slate. All right. You want to give them a little taste of Surf and Slate? Not really. <laughs> All right. Surf and Slate. What's up? Tell me the future. Ask away, dude. Are you going to be at the Super Bowl party next week? That's not happening. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Sammy Stone, woo! <laughs> Sammy Stone will definitely be here next week. So, what do you say we take a break? Yeah. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we will wrap up for the weekend. Coming right back. See, they're not ready. Here we go. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered.
The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Ravio.com. Hey, this is Chris Lusk Jake, and if in Ravio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. <clears throat> Welcome back to the Laurie Day Show with Bruce Disco here on the Enravio TV Network. What do we learn today? You know, I always learn a few things. Ah, so I would say the, like first, the, show. the first thing I learned is that Rocky's a good son. Yes. And he's got a legitimate excuse for blowing us off for next week because he's going to help his mom move. You think he made the whole thing up? I don't, I, I, I don't think he's that kind of a guy. I don't think he's that kind of a guy. You think he's really just going to Las Vegas to get drunk for the weekend and then heading well, over he to San Francisco? Well, you know, I mean, I well, he did say, and he really thought I was calling him out there a little bit, and I guess I was, you know. Because <laughs> I, I really wanted to say, you know, you're not going to be on somebody else's show next week. Yeah. Well, he did mention Howard Stern, though, so I guess if we lose to somebody, I guess Howard's not a bad guy to be losing we could to. Always lose. Maybe Howard will invite us to his Super Bowl. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> Um, I learned that, uh, that uh, NFL defensive players bring peanuts with them out onto the field. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. Randy Beverly probably should have been uh, MVP of Super Bowl three. And that Joe Klecko uh, is not in the Hall of Fame. I really always thought he was, to be honest with you. I really? knew he was in the Hall of Fame, and now I can't figure out why he's not. Well, we're going to have to do a little research on that. You start the grassroots movement to get him... Get him at least on the ballot. I'd like, you know what? A guy like Joe Klecko, who has had such a great career. Yeah. Okay. Um, why wouldn't he at least be on the ballot? If he doesn't get in because he's not voted in, that's one thing. But to not be on the ballot, how could that be? He's one of the best players of all time. Of all you think time? he's one of the I best players of all time? I know he's one of the greatest Jets of all time. You well, know. doesn't that make you one of the best players? Uh, you look at how many how many Super Bowls have the Jets won, just. Uh, disco? Just one. Exactly. How many times have they been to the Super Bowl? Just one. Yeah, yeah. But they're one for one. That, that, that's they're true. batting 1,000. That's true. And yeah, of course, both the Jets and my fantasy football team are undefeated in championship games. Okay. Of course, I've only been to two in 35 <laughs> years. But, uh, and I guess the last thing I learned is that Cam Ward is black. Cam Newton. Cam Newton. Cam Ward, Cam, Cam Newton. Cam Newton is definitely black. Yes. And uh, that's why everybody hates him. Everybody hates Cam. Isn't that a show? Oh, that's everybody hates Chris. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Chris Rock. Uh, and now I also found out, you know, my dream has always been to compete in a li international Olympic event as a woman. <laughs> and, but I would never do it because I didn't want to remove my original hardware. Okay. And you could also be the bearded lady. You know? I could be the bearded lady. <laughs> now, as long as I don't have to move, remove the hardware, I could start training. You would, you would kind of think that would restrict you with running, don't you think? Oh, I you think know? that would be a, a, you know, a deterrent. Right. You'd be flapping around there a little bit, you know. <laughs> Thanks to our producers, Kyle Melnick and Eric Mikhaila, for all their hard work making us look uh, so good out there. And thanks to Rocky Cleaver for sharing his insights with us. And you can follow him on Facebook at Victor Rocky Cleaver. Uh, again, thanks Chuck and Bonnie for putting up with this nonsense week after week and allowing us to bring you this type of quality programming. And of course, thanks to you, our loyal viewers. Don't forget, you can check out the Glory Days on demand page on www.inradio.com to watch any of our past shows or any of the other great shows on the Inradio TV network. Next week will be our fifth big game extravaganza, so uh, make sure you join us for the live stream. Uh, go to our Facebook page, the Glory like Facebook, Facebook page. Get like tickets for the show. And say, I want tickets. <laughs> and what are the, how much are the tickets going for? $1,500 apiece? 20, 15 to 21, 2100 on StubHub, but okay. you know, we got to make something on the side. <laughs> Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we will see you next time.
in radio.com.